Welcome to worship today at Anoka Covenant Church. We're glad that you are here and get to be a part of our worship service. We are thankful for you and we are thankful to God for all that he is doing in our midst. And I ask that you would bow with me as I pray. Thank you, God, now as we come to you in worship. May our hearts be filled with your truth and your hope and your righteousness. And we thank you, God, that we can come before you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue by hearing some songs and singing some songs to glorify God. your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out
look today at Mark chapter 4, verses 3 through 9. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed, and as he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon withered under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so that they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop of 30, 60, and even a 100 times as much as had been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And this is Jesus talking to a large group of people. And he wanted to communicate some things. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray now as we hear these words that we would not only listen, but we would understand. And thank you, God, for your words and for what it says about us and how we today, God, can sow a seed that grows and that produces 30, 60, or 100 times fold of what has been planted. And thank you now for your words and for this time to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week is a really, I think, good uh, sermon for me to hear because this week I experienced something that really kind of zapped, took away some of my thankfulness. And I'm just going to tell it to you right now. Um, I helped out my daughter who had a car that was causing problems. And the problem was it was super loud. And so she was so afraid that there was something really serious that she, she wanted me to help her with it. So I helped her with it, get it to the service station. And uh, we left it there and they called back not too long afterwards and just said, Hey, we know the problem. And the problem was that your catalytic converter isn't there. And it's like, what? Yeah, somebody stole your catalytic converter. Now this is a car that's not very good. Um, it's old, it's got a lot of miles, and yet somebody stole something. And that just really zapped me when I was like, come on, really? And those kind of things, all of us experience at times, but it really zapped me in terms of being not feeling grateful at that moment. I, I mean, I guess I could say I'm grateful that service uh, place could clearly tell me what the problem was, and so it's like, uh-huh. But there were a lot of other extenuating circumstances after that that uh, gave me pause and to think what to do next. But today we have an opportunity to see that there is so much that God has done for us that we want to listen and we want to understand what God's trying to say through this parable of the seed and the ground. And we know the seed is the word of God and the planting and that the ground is our hearts or our minds and, and being receptive. And, and as Christians, they, and realize that all these um, examples that they use of the different kinds of seed, the thorny ground, the shallow uh, ground, the fertile ground, all those are hearts that have accepted that I've said yes to God and yes to his words. However, not every one of those uh, produce the way they should. And today I'm trying to help us to see how we can be sowers of seeds of thankfulness and the implications from what this message is today. Now the main goal of this is that uh, you would see that God wants to to make our hearts. And, and, and how do we do that? How do we allow ourselves to be fertile ground in a, in a world that has so many things going on? Even in this week, I felt like I used the excuse of COVID a number of times. Well, I couldn't, you know, this because of COVID or, yeah. Well, we still today, can be thankful. Even though people steal parts of our car, there are things to be thankful for. And, and we're not doing this just because it's a week of uh, the week of Thanksgiving. We're doing this because God has given us things that we need to understand and acknowledge. So I already mentioned that the ground that 
we have here, this fertile ground, is what I'm wanting all of us today to be a part of in terms of our hearts. And that fertile ground that's planting seeds that grow in abundance uh, in terms of how things are. But we also see in this text that uh, people who aren't having fertile ground, there's some different reasons for what's going on. And, and so today I want to encourage us to see this fertile, the thorny soil and the uh, shallow soil are not environments in that we want, of course, to grow uh, our crop of thankfulness towards that. We can't produce that if we're doing that. Uh, give you another example here. Um, the last couple days I was walking my dog and we went into Bunker Hills and in Bunker Hills there's a lot of different stuff out there and one of the things that I seem to always pick up on my dog is burrs. We don't see it in the neighborhood so much but we see it a lot in Bunker Hills and when I get back from um, walking I have to pick off those burrs and it's never fun and it's never fun for me and it's never fun for my dog having them take off but you, you can't leave those burrs on because they're just annoying and, and, and bad in terms of what uh, that does and so today I want us to see if, if we're going to have ground that is fertile we need to weed our hearts and weed our minds so what does that mean it means that we need to disengage from things that are hindering, that are choking our life of thankfulness. And that doesn't mean that we don't know what's going on in the world, but I do want to challenge you with this. I've noticed that there are certain um, media, organ media groups and other things that just keep hitting certain things. And remember, news, sad to say for the most part, is negative, 97% they've done statistics on, of the news that's going out there is negative stuff. And when we keep reading news over and over again, especially when we're following certain aspects, whether it be the vote count or um, whether it be crime reports or COVID-related things, it just feels like everything is going the wrong way. And yeah, we need to know what's going on. We don't want to be unaware. But also I want to challenge you, how many times do you need to read uh, in a day more reports uh, on certain things regarding COVID? After a while, uh, there's an overwhelmingness that can come on us and that kind of chokes, it chokes our, our attitude in terms of our willingness to think that there's good things going on in the world. Now, again, hear me out. It's important for us to hear what's going on in the world, but there's also, we can get overwhelmed by these reports. We can get overwhelmed by too much of something, just as eating, and that's a challenge that I'm facing right now. Uh, I've been eating too much, and so I'm gaining weight again. And I have to say, hey, I just gotta pull back. And the same is true for, for your consumption of news or consumption of other things that that can hinder you from where you need to be in terms of we need to disengage with the world at times, not engage all the time. We need to pull back from some of the things and, and not get overwhelmed by all the things that are going on. Also, uh, we need to um, check our, our connections. How are we doing in terms of what we connect to? Uh, are, are you doing a lot of binge watching? Are you doing a lot of um, listening to certain things that clearly aren't bringing you in the right direction? Are you being around people that, uh, that you're hearing who are just bringing down your attitudes uh, and your ability to see God in that? If that is the case, then we need to pull back. We need to, to to not allow that to, to overwhelm us in terms of our thoughts and our minds. So we need to weed our hearts, we need to weed our minds, because we know that if you don't, on an active basis, prune those, th those parts of our uh, thinking, prune those parts of our connections, we're, it's going to hurt us, it's going to 
change the way we understand and think through things. And so, okay, you say, fine, Pastor Steve. So, all right, we're not supposed to do all this stuff all the time. So then where should we go? Well, the example I want to give to you is one in the Bible, and it's Daniel. Daniel uh, was a man who three times a day would spend time praying to God, reading his scripture. And he, he lived a very long life, and his life was a consistent life. And it seemed like even with all the changes that were going on in his world, from being uprooted from his home in Jerusalem to that of Babylon, and from one leadership to another leadership to another leadership to another kingdom coming in, he seemed consistent in terms of his life. He seemed to be stable. He was not uh, being tossed to and fro because he was stable. So what fed his mind? What fed his soul? It was spending time in the Word of God. It was praying to God. Those are things that we as Christians know, but are we doing them? Are we allowing them to be? And even when... Um, Daniel was told not to pray to God, was told not to spend time reading his... He said, no, I need to do this. We hear of other people throughout cult, the um, Christian faith through history who also were people who spent time, and as they were overwhelmed with certain things, they said, this is, I need to spend more time with God to get myself centered in who He is. So... Okay, you say, fine, that's great. I, I, I want to spend time with God. I want to read His Word. I want to pray. But I want to also challenge you. Are you in a small group? We, you can easily do Zoom. This week we did that as uh, the people I'm connected with, watching Zoom, getting to connect or connecting with each other, reading God's words together. It's so good to hear other people's perspective on the Word of God and to be a part of that community. That is important. I want to challenge you to do that, that you would spend time in God's words, but also connect it with other people and using Zoom or other ways. If you're not in a small group, let me know. We want to connect you so that you can be with other people who are spending time in God's words so that your hearts might be fertile for the word of God and also for your, your actions and your attitudes that it changes and transforms you. I think that's the part that Daniel, even in the midst of the struggle he was facing, he had an attitude of gratitude. And I know that's a you often used one, but I think that's important for us to hear. He had the right understanding that he wanted to give thanks to God. So today, I want to encourage you to be thankful. But how do we do that? How do we allow our lives to be focused on that? Is is to see what God's been doing. And to continue to allow God to speak into your life and to and prepare the soil of your life in allowing God's words to grow, to be rooted. So when difficult times come, when um, you're struggling with things, you don't uh, go off and uh, lose it because you're rooted, you're established, like that of a tree that's besides water that is restored. We are restored and we are renewed by understanding that God has not forsaken us. God is with us. So today, we want our hearts to be filled with Him and we need places and times to do that, but we also need to make sure that we are weeding other things that are pulling away, that aren't giving us the fertile soil, that aren't allowing our hearts to be filled with Him. And, and when we are serious about those things, it makes a difference. And I want to encourage you to be a part of the reality that God has life for you, that God has hope for you and a future. He made you, he created you, and he will sustain you. But you need to also be engaged with him. You need to be a part of what he's doing in your life. So today, let's close with this. Try this week to think of somebody who you could be a blessing to and do something about that.
May it be calling, may it be emailing, texting, but do something for someone else to let them know that you appreciate them, you're, you, you're encouraged by them, and then be somebody who's continually to multiply that actions of, of gratitude for others. Think about others and think about how God has given others for you to interact with in terms of your life. Well, thank you today for watching with me. I want you to know next week we will have a recorded uh, service, but it's going to be looking more like the regular worship services that we have. It won't be uh, done at 10 a.m., but it will be done later on, uh, probably around noon or so. Next week we'll have it because we are hoping in two weeks from now to have live streaming going on. And uh, we'll continue to keep you up to date on that. But that's at least our hope and our desire as we've moving along in terms of the technology. We have our new sound system we've put in. And as we get our uh, sound people and our music people up to date on what's going on there and with our videos, we're, we're really hopeful that in two weeks from now, we will be doing live streaming the first Sunday in December. Uh, but I'm encouraged by uh, some of these things, but I also know that I don't understand everything fully, and so we try to do things, and sometimes we succeed, and sometimes we don't succeed. But what I am thankful for is your continuing encouragement. I appreciate you when you say, hey, where's such and such, and, and to know that you're engaged with me, and I will try uh, my best, but the most important thing is to allow our hearts to be fertile in God. And would you pray with me? Thank you today, God, for this opportunity to look to your words. I pray that, God, your kingdom would come and your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And I thank you, God, for this week of thanksgiving. And I pray that, God, you would strengthen our hearts. I pray that you would uh, allow our hearts to be soft towards you through your Holy Spirit but that, God, you would fertilize us, that, God, we would do our part in weeding the soil of our heart and our mind, and that, God, we would give you the glory and give you praise, for, Father, that is what you've called us to do. And I thank you now for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness i will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness